Wow, I thought the open source model from OpenAI was going to be popular, but it really struck a chord in the industry. Let me break down all of the industry reactions for you right now. First, of course, Sam Altman's tweet, GPT OSS is out. We made an open model that performs at the level of O4 mini and runs on a high-end laptop, WTF, and a smaller one that runs on a phone, which is just crazy to think about. Super proud of the team, big triumph of technology. I'm so happy that they put all of this research and effort into this model and released it to the world. Let's keep going. And next, Steven Adler, former OpenAI team member on the safety research team says, credit where it's due. OpenAI did a lot right for their OSS safety evals. They actually did some fine tuning, which I believe he means, and it was mentioned in the blog post that they put fine tuning effort into trying to get the models to do quote unquote bad things. And even after trying to fine tune it, trying to get it to do these things, there was really a ceiling on its capabilities. They got useful external feedback, great, and they shared which recs they adopted and which they didn't. And here's what he's referring to, the recommendations implemented and recommendations not adopted. Steven also put out this little comparison card thing of safety amongst all the top frontier labs, and he said, Previously, OpenAI committed to doing testing this rigorous for all its frontier models. This had earned OpenAI a green on this scale, the only one of the leading AI companies to make this commitment. So good job there. And next, Aiden Clark, Qualitative Mathematics at OpenAI released this really insane video of him controlling his desktop using the new open source model. Take a look at this. So he has all these text documents, just tons and tons of them that are scattered all over his desktop and... Here we go, turning Wi-Fi off. So this is writing on the computer, 36 gigabytes of memory. User, I have a big morning today, but my desktop is so cluttered. Can you move everything to the trash? Assistant, let's see how fast it does it. Very nice, very fast. Looks to be maybe 50, 60 tokens per second. And there we go, it's done, look at that. All of the files disappeared. A very, very slick demo. Now, when I tested the 20 billion parameter version locally on my beast of a Mac, it's a 96 gigabyte Mac Studio, it actually didn't run all that fast, just about 65 tokens per second. And this is the MLX version, so I'm wondering why that is. So here it is in LM Studio, 61.67 tokens per second, 1400 tokens total, and 0.41 seconds to first token, which is very fast, but I would expect it to be faster than 61 tokens per second. Now I haven't tried the 120 billion parameter version yet locally, and I definitely plan on doing that because I'm pretty sure I can fit it in my 96 gigs of memory. And of course, Flavio Adamo, tested the ball bouncing in the hexagon, and he said it passes the vibe check. No way, this is a 20 billion parameter model. It's beating models two to three times its size. So remember, this is the 20B version, not the 120, and let's see. The physics look very good. Obviously, this is a more simplistic version of the hexagon test, but there's a good amount of friction, gravity, bounciness. This is just a very impressive demo of an open source model. Now he goes on to say, doesn't pass the hardest version of the hexagon test and throws a few too many syntax errors, had to retry a couple times. He's about to test the 120B now. This is the GLM 4.5 version right here. So still impressive, but definitely GPT OSS takes the crown here. Matt Schumer just put out a fantastic project called GPT OSS Pro Mode, basically O3 Pro, but for the new OpenAI open source models. Pro Mode chains together up to 10 instances of the new OpenAI GPT OSS model, enabling it to produce a better answer than one instance alone could create. It's kind of like Grok4 Heavy where you kick off multiple agents that are all doing the same thing simultaneously and working together and then you get the best results. So let's take a look at the video. Here, explain self-play and reinforcement learning with a concrete example. Boom, got a bunch of output and lots of code, and this is multiple agents working together. I'm gonna drop a link to this project down below. It is open source. Thank you, Matt Schumer. 
Now, if you don't have a machine capable of running the 120 billion parameter version, there is a great option, the sponsor of today's video, Together AI. So Together AI supports the new open source models from OpenAI on day zero, and they have incredibly fast speeds and incredibly low prices. For the new 120 billion parameter model, it is 15 cents per million input tokens and 60 cents per million output tokens. I can't get over how cheap it is, and it is lightning fast. Now, if you just wanna play around with it without using the API, you can do so in Together AI's Playground, just like so, right at 500 word story. And there we go, you can see how fast it really is. That is 123 tokens per second. But of course, the real power of Together is to power your AI application. So you can grab an API key from them and get started immediately. I'm gonna drop a link down below. Click through that link to let them know I sent you. It's super helpful for me. And they support all of the best frontier open source models. So thanks again to Together AI, and now let's keep looking at industry reactions. All right, Dharmesh Shah, the co-founder and CTO of this little company called HubSpot, has this to say. Even more current status. Now we have a 120 billion parameter version of GPT OSS running locally on my MacBook Pro. That is insane. So obviously it's gonna be very possible for me to run this model on my Mac Studio. I will reiterate how exciting it is to have a top tier AI model with open weights running locally on a consumer laptop. The entirety of the 120 billion parameter model is about 65 gigs, small enough to fit on a $15, 128 gigabyte USB stick. That's all the storage it takes to store a model that writes prose and poems, knows a lot about almost every domain and discipline and can reason through relatively hard questions. I've talked about this numerous times on the channel. One of the best things you could do to prepare for the maybe worst in the world is buy a USB stick, store the latest model on it, get a little battery pack, have your laptop ready to go and install the model locally. And look at this, somebody actually asked him specs of your Mac, M4 Max with 128 gigs of RAM. I didn't even know you can get 128 gigs of RAM on a laptop, that's insane. And it's specifically insane for a Mac, just to be clear. And Clem, the co-founder and CEO of Hugging Face, shows that the new open source model from OpenAI is now the number one trending model on Hugging Face. Now they have nearly 2 million open models there, so that is quite the achievement. He also goes on to say, people sometimes forget that they've already transformed the field. GPT-2, released back in 2019, is Hugging Face most downloaded text generation model ever still that's crazy and whisper the text-to-speech model has consistently ranked in the top five audio models now they're doubling down on openness they may completely transform the ai ecosystem again exciting times ahead and there it is number one Miles Brundage, another former safety researcher at OpenAI, has this to say. Quick GPT OSS takes. Performance is very good, not shocking given minis, the mini version of 03, 04, but a big step for open models. Safety stuff, pretty good. I'd like to see others doing this for near state-of-the-art open models. Need clear threat models though. And smaller ones would be good for people with actual low-end computers, but now that it's open weights, that's great because other people can take it and quantize it and shrink it down and maybe use it to train other smaller models. So anything's really possible now that the model's out there. Now, he goes on to say, elaborating a bit on need clear threat models though, OpenAI was probably intentionally, perhaps rightly, ambiguous read the details of malicious fine tuning they did. And that's what I was talking about earlier. They fine tune the models to be malicious and they only could get it to be so capable in malicious use cases. And more generally, the risk of open weights models depends on factors beyond uplift versus search other model. Nathan Lambert has a very interesting take on why OpenAI released the open source model. What could be a two-step master plan? Release open model to commoditize much of the model market a tad off the frontier. And so he's talking about the scorched earth approach. When as a leading company in any market, you put out a free product, you basically force every competitor you have to lower their prices drastically. And then step two of the master plan, release GPT-5 as the only model worth paying for. Really curious about all the strategy decisions that went into this open model. So what do you think, by the way? You think this is true? Do you think they're putting it out there to kind of go the scorched earth path that Meta did with Llama? 
basically forcing everybody to lower their prices because now there's a free model out there that is extremely capable. But that might not be all this week. Sam Altman hinted at something bigger. We have a lot of new stuff for you over the next few days. And this was at 8.51 a.m., about an hour and nine minutes before the open source announcement. Something big but small today. Okay, that's the open source model. And a big upgrade later this week. Could it be GPT-5? We shall see. Aaron Levy, Box CEO, had a really good take as well. Listen to this. OpenAI dropping a powerful open weight model shows how much value will accrue to the app layer in AI. Not the model layer, the app layer. The price of AI tokens should largely converge with the price of infra, so that's usually the silicon plus electricity plus some margin. Most value will be generated based on the applied AI agent use cases. And we'll see. I think this is a pretty good take in general. And I do think that the prices of models, the price of intelligence in general is collapsing and converging on essentially zero or whatever kind of the infra layer plus little margin is, as Aaron said. But it's still to be seen how much value will accrue at the application layer. Now, if we look at things like Cursor and Windsurf and Klein and a lot of agent frameworks like Crew AI, we do see that a lot of the value is going to the application layer. But there's still so much in flux right now with the software industry, with SaaS in general. We shall see. Rohan Pandey, who is an ex OpenAI team member, says also to everyone dunking on OpenAI for pre training supposedly costing a bajillion dollars compared to DeepSeek, please read the GPT OSS model card. And what they said is the 20 billion parameter model costs less than $500,000 to pre-train. So if we look at the model card, check this out. It was trained on NVIDIA's H100 GPUs using the PyTorch framework with expert optimized Triton kernels, and it required 2.1 million H100 hours to complete with the 20B version. So that was the 120B, the 20B version needing almost 10x fewer. Both models leverage flash attention algorithms to reduce the memory requirements. So he did the math and that is how he came up with the 500k cost. So a very efficient model to train. And I had said in the previous video about this model that it might be what we saw with Horizons Alpha, but it turns out it's probably not. I was wrong about that. So I think Twitter user Blazer here showed a comparison of Horizons Beta and GPT OSS 120B. So this is the beta, I believe, and looks really good. And then we have OSS 120B, which obviously is a much more simple UI. And Theo GG showed the same thing. Here on the left is Horizon Beta. This is what it looks like, kind of a little bit hard to see because it's small. And then on the right, GPT OSS 120B. So he said it's good, but definitely not the Horizon models. And Theo also came up with this really funny and Kind of interesting snitch bench benchmark, which tests the model's inclination to snitch on you. And so compare how different AI models behave when presented with evidence of corporate wrongdoing, measuring their likelihood to snitch to authorities. And as we can see here, GPT OSS 20B at zero, the 120B version right here about 20% of the time. Now, all the way at the top, we have Grok 4 nearly 100% of the time, Claude 4 Opus right there, and so on. And you can see the government snitch rate in red versus the media snitch rate in orange. I love this test. Very funny, very interesting. So that's it. That's some of the industry reactions. Follow me on Twitter if you don't already, and I'll continue to post about it at Matthew Berman. And if you enjoyed this video, please consider giving a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.